This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Limeria Farm. But before that, this video is brought to you by Talger and Coulier Farms. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Limeria Farm map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Limeria Farm is a Brazilian map with the relief and real PDA of the region of the municipality of Limeria in the state of San Paulo. This map has medium to small fields, all with missions and fields with forestry. There are three new crops in rice, caraco beans, and alfalfa. Starting as new farmer, you will start with a few animals and vehicles. The machine sh workshop is located at the city's gas station. In addition, the city has a market that accepts various products. The fuel location is also at the vehicle workshop. Grains in general can be delivered to two warehouses on the map. If you need limestone, you can go to the limestone quarry, and that is also where you can sell your stones. Bales can be sold at the Cellarino to sell milk, go to the covered market, or add a dairy to produce milk products. You start with one main farm containing sheds to store your machinery, as well as a house to sleep in, one side of the store your grain, a chicken pasture, and a fuel tank. Now, I'm not sure about that because I don't recall any chickens at the starting farm, but we'll take a look at that here in a minute. All the land on the map can be purchased, objects present in the farm can be sold for customization. This map also has a sugarcane factory where you can sell sugarcane, but it is not a sugarcane production factory. It is merely a sugarcane sell point. There's also no snow on this map. Winter in this region is cold and dry. Let's go ahead and load in. Now we do have some required mods that are on this map. Those required mods are the BR Metal Shed, Brazilian Fences Pack, Bunker Silo Set, Confining Cows, the ESC Large Sheds, Farm Entrance, Farm House, Forestry Cell Point, Lizard Circular Pivot Irrigation, Pig Feed Buying Station, Small Farm Pack, South Brazilian Warehouses, Southern Brazilian Sheds, and then we are also going to be making use of the mods we typically use when we look at maps, which is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, we'll tell you if you load this map up in farm management or start from scratch, the main farm is going to be built out exactly how you see it here in new farm mode. You do not own any starting machinery, I believe, in those alternate game modes. Kind of starting to second doubt myself. I know I checked it out, but honestly, I'm having a little issue remembering all of these maps released today. And I will tell you, you also do not own any land. Here we are at our main starting area. I did load this map up with a low end system and I was suffering from some frame issues here at the farm, as well as to the northeast when we get into the town area. Now, I don't know if that was because we were loading in textures that we didn't have already cached or if it was really relating to having a bunch of stuff up here and maybe possibly lower end systems are going to experience a little bit of a performance drop here and in town as a result. But I just wanted to let you all know that. If we take a look at the PDA itself, you're going to see that this map is predominantly forest. Now, it is not a densely populated forest, but it is predominantly forest with the bulk of our fields right here kind of in the center. We do have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22 on this map. In addition, as the description said, alfalfa, caracoa beans, and rice. If you do happen to have the premium expansion enabled, we also have red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Take a look at our farmland screen. You'll see we own farmland ID 1, which is fairly large at 111 acres in size and can be bought in any alternate game mode with $1.8 million. As a result, I would highly recommend starting in new farmer mode because that is going to give you this land at the start and you will not have to take out a loan to get going. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, 
if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included? And lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We're then going to go and compare that with our field calculator screen. And this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. I do have to say that all of these fields are fairly small, with the largest being nine hectares in size. Take a look at our crop counter. We do have a custom crop counter. Also want to draw your attention that we are starting in the month of February because this is a Southern Hemisphere map. And as such, we have a Southern Hemisphere crop growth schedule. Take a look at our prices screen. We do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basic crops that are once again available to us in Farm Sim 22, as well as our eggs, wool, and milk, and silage, hay, straw, and grass. Continue down through all of our base game productions. We once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items as well. We do have the ability of buying bulk lime. And we also do have the ability of getting rid of our stones at the debris crusher in the lime quarry. We have then sell points for alfalfa, alfalfa hay, rice, caracoa beans. And then as we can see, we do indeed have the ability of selling the Platinum Expansion production items at the fair. We do have the ability of also selling our Premium Expansion production items. Although those playing with pumps and hoses, we do not have a way of getting rid of that separated manure. So you will need to put down a sell point if you want to do anything other than apply it to your fields. Those playing with straw harvest though, good luck, because the bale sale station will accept your hay and straw pellets. With respect to our starting fleet, we start out with a decent list of starting machinery in new farm mode. It's all new. None of it is leased. We also start out with a fair number of animals. In fact, we have 40 cows in two different areas. So we have 20 cows in another pen and then two horses. No chickens. We do have contracts available on this map. We do not own any production chains. And we have 20 collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We start with the John Deere 6120M small tractor, as well as the 6250R medium tractor and the T560 harvester. The harvester is paired up with the 625X grain header. We also have the 2017 pickup truck and the John Deere Gator side by side. We've got the TA23065 slash two Breitner trailer. We have the Bergman. GTW 330 auger wagon, the Combi Plow Gold 4M subsoiler, we have the John Deere 1775 NT planter, as well as the Hardy Mega 1200L fertilizer and herbicide sprayer, and the Lizard pivot. And this pivot is set up at Farmland ID 3, which is going to be a large circular field. We have the Breedall K105 Fertilizer and Lime Spreader, the Manure Director 14 Manure Spreader. We have the Farm Tech Super Cease 800 Slurry Spreader, as well as the Primor 15070M Bale Shredder, the RA142 TMR Mixer, and the MKS8 Liquid Tanker. We wrap it all up with the 603R John Deere Front Loader Arms, although we don't have actually any implements for those front loaders. This map also does not have any custom vehicles or implements, but we do have the lizard circular pivot that is again listed as a required mod. Now, as far as our map goes, we have our farmhouse right here where we start. This is an interrupable farmhouse. So we can go ahead and make our way inside. And we have a wardrobe trigger and our sleep trigger here in our bedroom. Here we have our side-by-side -side in our pickup truck. We have our silo dump point located right here. And then our fill pipe is here around the side. In addition, over here to the side, we have two 
silage bunkers. These are pull through variety, but they do have a hillside up against them. And then right beside our farmhouse, we have one of our cow areas. So we have our drop off point or sorry, our horses. We have two horses here already. And we have our food and water trough for those horses. We have a water trigger over here by the farmhouse. And then we move into our cow areas. We do have our manure heap. We have a food trough and straw trigger here at this side. Some more implement storage. And let's circle back over here to this particular cow area. Because we have the cow drop off point here at the chute. 200 cows total. We have 20 in here. And then we have our slurry trigger located right there. Continuing past this cattle gate, we make our way around. And we have two additional cow areas. Down here, we have another loading chute. This one has 40 cows in it now and will hold 500 in total. We have our slurry point. And we're going to come back around and come through here. And here we're going to have our food and straw triggers for two cow areas. We have a cow area here on the right and a cow area here on the left. Coming around, we have our another cow chute. Then we have another 40 cows in this one. And again, that's going to hold a 500 total. went the wrong way, but I'm going to try to get over here. So that is the gate that I wanted to go into. Here we have our milk trigger. And then we have our slurry point for this cow area. And this is going to be our, I believe it's going to be our manure heap for these cow areas as well. And that is pretty much the starting farm here. Uh, sit back and I think about, you know, we haven't taken a look at our soil map. So let's go ahead and take a look at the soil map. We do have a custom soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. So I believe I misspoke earlier when I mentioned that the circular field was field three. It is field 32, and it's located here in the northwest. And as you can see, it is predominantly loam with a little segment of sandy loam and an even smaller segment of silty clay. The fields predominantly here in the middle are going to be loam and sandy loam with a little bit of loamy sand. And far to the east and west, we've got a bit of silty clay mixing in. We do have some fields down here to the south, and I believe this is where our sugarcane cell point is located. These are the forestry fields. Basically, their fields are set up and have grass and trees growing in them. Well, that, let's get a little bit of altitude and we'll once again take another look at the farm here. I will say we can sell a lot of the aspects of this farm. I was not able to sell these two animal pins. Maybe they'll sell and I just wasn't able to click on the actual proper trigger in order to get them to sell. But these two pins here, they seem to be permanently a part of the map, as did the horse area over here by the farm. Now, I was successful in getting rid of these farm gates. 
I was also successful in getting rid of the farmhouse and the sheds and silo that are located here, as well as this particular cow building. But what I was having issues with, as I said earlier, are these two cow areas and the horse area over here by the farmhouse. Now there is one more part of the farm. It's a bit removed. It's over here to the west. My field's 14, 15, and 16. So this is still part of our farmland. We come through our gate and come back down here. We do have a machine shed. I'm going to call this a nice bale shed. We have another grain silo down here with our dump and fill point. Another machine shed. And then down the hill, we have yet another set of barns or sheds or coverings. Perfect for large machinery or bales. And then we have a fuel station. Now let's go ahead and make our way down to the southeast corner. You see how the primarily the map is going to be forestry, but fairly thin forest. Down here we're going to have a manure and liquid manure buy point where we can purchase liquid manure and manure. So we're going to be able to buy slurry here. And we're going to be able to buy manure over here, or the equivalent of manure, at our sugarcane factory output. Now again, this is not a factory per se. It is simply a cell point that has been set up like a sugarcane factory. Here we have our wood cell point and our wood cell trigger. And then we're going to deliver our sugarcane right here in order to sell it. Now what South American map would not be complete without a lime quarry? That is a very good question. Seems almost to be a requirement for any Brazilian map is to have a lime quarry and we have that one right here. Very nice quarry. We just kind of meander our way down. This is where we're going to be depositing our stones and where we're going to be able to collect and buy our lime. This is not a factory. In fact, this map does not have any production built in, but we are going to be making our way over to town. And at this point, I will say that there is one plot that is set up for placeables. So we are still going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or an area or areas set aside for such. Here we have warehouse number two. It is a grain cell point. While we do not have any pigs on this map, we do have a pig food buy point located right there. We have warehouse number one. So another grain cell point. And we're making our way into town. And this is a viable plot you can buy and put down a factory if you or put down yeah production if you want to we also have a viable plot right here there's an empty lot with two trees clear these trees out then you can put your farmhouse here in town we have a bale cell point located right here we have our vehicle dealer and we're going to need to go inside in order to buy our vehicles. Go ahead and pick up that Mahindra, and we'll see where that spawns. So it's going to spawn here around the back of the building. And then we have our workshop trigger located right here. Now, the workshop trigger does not include corner markers, but I will tell you, it is basically this whole area around the back of the building. So it is a fairly extensive maintenance trigger. Another cell point over here. So 
go ahead and take a look at these and see how they are named. So we have the textile sell point. We have the bale sell point, as I mentioned, warehouse one, warehouse two, and the pig food buying station. We have the fair. And the fair is where many, many of the production sell items are going to sell as far as base game productions, as well as platinum and premium DLC productions. Up on the hill, we have our animal dealer. And then down from the hill, continuing to the west, we have our large field 32, which includes the pivot. You do need to own the land in order to use the pivot. And this field is going to cost you 775 thousand dollars so pretty costly field and this is a usable pivot i was messing around with it earlier and that folks is pretty much the map i mean it's got a lot of forestry it's got a lot of agriculture but the agriculture is pretty much focused in a rather narrow band across the center of the map and a little bit down by the sugar mill with respect to our scoring metrics we're going to be giving the map a full point with production being built in or areas set aside for such because we do have a couple placeable areas in town where we could put things down. In theory, you could probably also work around and put some things down here at the main farm. With respect to... The ability to sell all of our basic crops, production items, and animal sell points. So we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well. We're going to be taking a quarter point off with respect to the farms being customizable. Because again, we have this area here, which we were not able to sell. We are able to sell all the buildings off in the distance. And then we also are having an issue selling the horse area. We can sell everything else here. So I don't feel that we're overly restricted by having that large area with those two cow areas unsellable. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. I'll tell you what, I looked through a lot of these buildings and we're kind of having a fairly, fairly strong presence of the new texturing technique. There's a couple buildings that may be light on that, but we're going to go ahead and give the map a full point there as well. And we're going to take a quarter point off with respect to triggering interactive areas being clearly marked because we do have that dealer trigger at the main shop that is missing the corner markers. So that's going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. I'd love to know what you all think of Limeria Farm. What do you all think of the South American maps in general? As well as more specifically, the South American crop counters that we're getting with a few of these more recent South American maps. And until next time, happy farming.